My lords, ladies, distinguished guests, and the wonderful QM girls. I've been told that a good speech should be like a classic six-form skirt. Short enough to keep the boys interested, but long enough to please Mrs. Cameron. <laughs> I'm also fully aware that many of the upper six girls want to turn their blood type into type A, Pims and Prosecco. <laughs> so with that said, I better get started. Now, I have to be honest and admit that I've silently been hoping that whoever spoke before me tripped and fell. <laughs> In a final desperate attempt to give myself more confidence. However, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ebony Rainford Brent for delivering such a thought-provoking and inspirational speech. And on behalf of all the QM girls, especially the upper sick, I cannot thank you enough for your contribution to this special day. United. Serena Williams was beating her sister to secure her place in the US Open semi-finals. And 28 girls entered Red House for the first time. And it was on this day that the upper six assume that I started thinking about this very moment. <laughs> you were, as it was on at least day three. <laughs> when I first sat down to write this speech, as someone who is very rarely short of words, it suddenly dawned on me. How do I even begin to sum up the past seven years, full of memories and people that deserve so greatly to be thanked? Although it has to be said, I'm still not quite sure how we've made it this far. Well, minus a few appendix along the way, and I'm sure after tonight's ball, a lot of our dignity. <laughs> However, before you all get too comfortable, I just want to highlight the emergency exits. Here and here. However, that role should probably have come from Mr. Elwes, who at last year's ball found it necessary to check under the buses for explosive devices. <laughs> As I stand up here today, I'm experiencing a mix of emotions. Excitement, anxiety, and of course, the inevitable sadness at the thought of not seeing the girls who are more like sisters to me every day. However, you know it's the right time for you to leave after you've started to politely decline pistachio nuts at drinks parties because you're used to being in a nut-free zone. <laughs> For the past 12 months, I've had endless questions being fired my way. Luce, when exactly am I mentioned in your speech? <laughs> Don't worry, I can tell you loads of funny stories about me. And this was only in September. One girl in the lower six was even willing to pay £20 for a mention, <laughs> while going on to say that she'd laugh at every attempt at a joke 
for a fiver. <laughs> so to Zoe Dick, wherever you are, <laughs> I'm happy to take cash or cheque for um, a few drinks at the bar later. We'll see if fine. <laughs> Leading up to today, I've been advised to present the upper six qualities in a positive light. And I've been warned not to mention specific tales. In particular, <laughs> I've been told that under no circumstance whatsoever should I mention the mysterious outbreak of food poisoning that occurred after bonfire night <laughs> from two peculiarly named meats, one called Smirnoff <laughs> and the other named Chekhov. <laughs> So I won't. <laughs> so, girls, the day has finally come, and it's only fitting that it's on Independence Day when we flee the QM nest and embark on the next stages in our lives. But I began to think to myself, will QM be satisfied with the finished product? And are we really QM girls? So I thought, the only place for me to turn to was the little white book itself. And girls, I apologise in advance, but I'm going to read out the school aims and ethos, just to double check that we tick all the right boxes. <laughs> girls will achieve excellence, inside and outside the classroom. Now, let me take you back to third year, when two girls thought that they would explore their surroundings and go for a walk around Esperick Park. However, not only did this end with them being five miles outside of Esperick, <laughs> they began to hitchhike, <laughs> only to discover that the car pulling up was none other than a QM housemistress. <laughs> this truly was an excellent display of navigation skills, <laughs> and I'm sure it comes as no surprise that Flo Wilkinson's relationship with geography slowly deteriorated. <laughs> Girls will develop an enthusiasm for independent thought, learning and research. Well, yes, we seem to have this one covered as well. Not only did one upper sixth girl write half of a history essay during her 18th birthday celebrations, <laughs> She wrote the other half during the morning after, <laughs> with a severe headache. However, we really can't doubt her enthusiasm and her ability, as not only did she write a good essay, it was described as the best of her academic career. <laughs> so congratulations to our sacristan. <laughs> with emotional maturity, social awareness and respect for individuality and difference. You've just got to let us fly. These are the words that came from one opposite girl during a conversation with my mother. However, instead of it being during a university or gap year talk that you'd expect, Eliza Manners was indeed attempting to negotiate our first festival <laughs> at the tender age of 14. <laughs> the fact that this tactic actually worked either highlights Eliza's persuasive skills or my mother herself. <laughs> but I'll let you decide on that one. <laughs> Girls will be interesting, well-informed, happy and confident members of the community. Now then, a QM girl is always dedicated to their community, going above and beyond to care for those around them, even if that does result in a certain maintenance man having to ask a member of staff why girls in car house were photographing him <laughs> while he was simply attempting to do the gardening. <laughs> Note to first years, valley fever can hit even the best of us. <laughs> Girls will forge special friendships that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Out of every school aim, this is the one where I believe the upper sixth girls really excel. 
to my dear friends. Undoubtedly, there are things in life that we all wish we could change along the way. But the one thing that I would not change for one single second has been my experience at QM with you girls. For you are the girls that made me laugh during a time when I feared I could never smile again. And for that alone, I will be eternally grateful. The thought of not seeing you all every day fills me with sadness. However, I know that the friendships that we have made over the past seven years truly will last a lifetime. And now, on to the part of my speech where Mrs. Cameron's face will slowly lose a bit of its colour. <laughs> As it's about now when she'll realise that this is a bit she hasn't heard before. <laughs> now, we all know that Mrs. Cameron can outdo us all on the positivity scale. But Casa Cam, <laughs> we really do love you for it. Well, maybe not on a Monday morning before chapel, but almost every other time. So I'm going to record a story when Mrs. Cameron's enthusiasm really did leave me lost for words. It was on a train journey back from London in late November when a fight broke out between a man without a ticket and a train guard. Let's picture the scene. Swear words and threats are being flown around. Passengers are slowly beginning to evacuate the carriage. The train guard is contemplating calling for backup. And Mrs. Cameron, well, Mrs. Cameron, was commenting on the wittiness of the aggressor's comments. <laughs> While she began to, rather loudly, chuckle in her seat. <laughs> Mrs Cameron, I found it increasingly more difficult to find the words to say thank you to you. Your dedication, love and enthusiasm for our school is second to none. And you have left extraordinarily large boots to film. Queen Margaret's loss really is Queen Mary's gain, and we wish you every success and happiness in your future role. Foundations are definitely strong and solid for 
the future of QM. When I first walked into Mrs. Miles' home and saw the dinosaurs and footballs that surrounded me, I began to fear that she'd arrived at the wrong school. <laughs> However, as I have worked with her over the past term, it is evident that QM is exactly the right place for Mrs. Miles, and she is the right person for QM. We all wish you and your family every happiness at Eskrick Park. could not survive without a strong structure behind it. QM would not be the school that it is without the dedicated staff that work here, to our wonderful teachers, who have inspired, motivated and cared for us over the past seven years. We really couldn't have asked for better mentors and QM is exceptionally lucky to have every single one of you here. Even if, if Mr Giles must be the only teacher on the planet to take a Swiss army knife on a school trip. <laughs> Let alone to the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> to the house staff that have shared the ups, the downs, the laughter and the tears. We really could not have made it here today without your continual care and support. It is very rare that girls to school can happily sit for hours talking with their house staff. And for that, I count ourselves very fortunate. And to every other member of staff, to the admin staff for keeping the school running, to the gardeners for maintaining the beautiful grounds, the cleaners for keeping the buildings in such amazing order, to the catering staff for endlessly providing us with food, and to the estates team for pretty much keeping us alive, <laughs> and for providing some much needed eye candy. <laughs> On recollecting his school days, John Lennon once said, when I was five years old, my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment, and I told them they didn't understand life. So the moment has finally come when we will leave this marquee for the final time. My late father always told me, work hard Lucy, but play harder. <laughs> I wish every single one of the beautiful talented, slightly bonkers upper sick girls, every happiness that life can possibly bring. Ultimately, life will bring us hard times and good times, but with friends like you by your side, anything can be possible. Remember, a ship will be safe in a harbour, but that's not what a ship is built for. We have had the best start in life that we could have ever imagined. So here is my final thank you to our parents. As it is down to the love of our parents, those here today and those who sadly aren't, who have given us the opportunity to make lifelong friends in this wonderful school. I couldn't deliver the speech without quoting one of my favourite philosophers. This is your moment. Every single minute you spend, try to hold on to it, because you might never get it again. So thank you to Kieran. <laughs> a member of the estates team and his tattoo. For those inspirational words. Years dozing off. <laughs> Goodbye, QM. You have given us the best friendships, the best education, 
and the best memories that we could have ever wished for. Although, maybe goodbye is the wrong word. Perhaps cheerio is more appropriate. As after arriving at QM with no sisters, I am leaving with 64, who I've laughed with until we have cried, and cried with until we have laughed. Quite often, uncontrollably. <laughs> when we first started QM, we were at the foot of a very large and daunting mountain. And after years of climbing, we have finally made it to the top. And what an extraordinary view it is. So I'll end with a song that means a lot to my family. In the words of Doris Day, when I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will life bring? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. K Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. K Sarah, Sarah. What will be, will be. <laughs> <laughs>